Welcome to the Nightcap. It's your girl, Carolina Sanchez, and tonight we're talking families, honey. Mm. Raising a family is already hard as it is. It takes a village, but combining two families, making them one, I'm talking blended families, now that's even harder. It's a delicate balance of what you can, can't do, and how everybody gets along. We're gonna talk about it, but I need a drink in my hand, and we've got Elsa here from Comfort Foodies, and what's this, baby? This is a guava strawberry margarita for you. Guava strawberry margarita. The blend of guava and strawberry. Yes. Mwah, I love it. All right, and my girls on the couch, they've got their drinks ready, so let's get into it. Yeah, what's up for a nightcap? Chill, you know, kick back. When I got married for the second time, I was very well aware that the rate, divorce rate for second marriages is even higher and blending families is hard. One thing that I have learned through the experience is you can't just get remarried and expect it to be one big happy family. You're blending two micro units. Like I still travel alone with my kids. I take one-on-one -on -one trips with them. My husband takes one-on-one -on -one trips with his kids. People are like, oh, did you go with your husband? No, your family, no, I was traveling with my kids. Extended family gatherings and birthdays, my husband and his kids don't always make it. And that's okay. It takes time for these relationships to develop and evolve naturally. And the less you force it or have expectations of what it should look like, the more you're setting yourself up for blended family success. Blended family success. All right, we're gonna talk to these ladies who are part of blended families themselves. We got China Smoke back in the building. We've got Teresa Clanton and Elsa, we found out right yes. after you gave me this delicious <laughs> margarita that you are also part of we a are. blended family. Yes, we are. All right, so what is y'all's dynamic? What is the makeup of your blended family? I think I have the most simple one. I just have uh, remarriage with kids. My husband does not have kids. There's no like other kids coming into it. We just have crisscross, like, you know, ex-husband with kids. We have a kid. We make it work with other marriages. Like, you know, mm -hmm. we're kind of like the most basic model of I'm divorced with a kid, but I remarried with a kid. He remarried, they have kids. So that's our like blended family. Gotcha. It's a, yes. There's a lot of, yeah. I love how you said it was the most simple. It's, yeah. it's, it's like actually most, like we got all these simple branches like, and trees. Divorced with a kid, we each have kids, but we are like family together. Mm -hmm. Yes. And an attempt for the kids to be normal and, and happy. So that's, you know, that's our blended. We're like the basic model, I guess you could say. <laughs> All right, China. Uh, let's hear about your model. Is it the premier model? Okay. So, <laughs> no, my model this is my favorite. <laughs> of blended family is not orthodox at all. Um, I have four children, two which are mine, um, to which my ex-girlfriend came into the relationship with and with us being in a relationship, we had two boys together. Now, I already previously came into the relationship with her. I had three girls already, okay? So now we are talking about seven kids, right? Yes. Okay, so on top of those seven kids, me and my ex-girlfriend are not together, but we do co-parent. Great. We're great at co-parenting. Um, I have a, a man that I've been with for like six years. Uh -huh. He has two kids and we all live together. So my baby mama, she live at her house. Me and my kids live at my house with my dude and his two kids. Okay, we're gonna have to uh, unpack that coming up. Okay. Uh, wow, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. Elsa? Well, for me, uh, we not only blended like our kids, but obviously culturally also, because I'm Dominican uh -huh. and my husband's from Houston. Mm -hmm. And so he has a son and I have two kids from my previous relationship. And that's that's our blended family. So like mine is kind of like Teresa. 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 <laughs> um, but also then you have the cultural aspect that it's two different cultures that I've and not just to blend blended together. together. Oh yeah. Um, so we just try to make it work. Now the good thing is, is that our kids were already older, mm -hmm. like almost adults when him and I got married. So it was a little bit less stressful, I guess, if you want to say, because they yeah. each had their own lives. And so, you know, that also made it a little bit less stressful for us as adults. Gotcha. Um, but nevertheless, all right, so <laughs> listening to let's going back to that TikTok that we saw, where it's like her rule of thumb is like don't try to force relationships. Is that the approach you find the best? Everybody doing their own thing with their own kids, and then also bringing them together where it works, or 
I, I think for our situation, my daughter was one when we got divorced. Mm. So she actually doesn't even remember us being together. She's gotcha. like, I, you and dad to me are, it's weird to think that you guys were together because she was just so little. So it was important for me that once he got remarried and have has kids and I'm remarried and have kids, like, I want her to feel, I always felt she was my number one priority no matter what because she was the split, mm -hmm. uh, you know, factor between both of us. So mm -hmm. I never wanted her to feel left out because she has to go back and forth. So we purposely, like on her birthdays and stuff, we do it all one big family unit together. We don't hang out together. We don't mm -hmm. make plans together. But when it comes to her, we all, you know, like their kids and our kid, they're close. So it's almost like they're all siblings. Mm -hmm. so but we, we do that for them. her though. We do yeah. that for her. Elsa, I'm gonna go to you because I feel like we're gonna have to talk to you after the commercial break <laughs> yeah. to understand that dynamic. So for us is, again, our kids were older, mm -hmm. middle school, high school, graduate. They're actually adults now. They're mm -hmm. all adult kids. But um, kind of like Teresa, we go on we've gone on vacations together. For birthdays, we all get together, you know, go to, you know, go to birthday dinners together. Thanksgiving, we all get together. You know, it's not forced per se, mm -hmm. but it's kind of like understood between even all the kids that, you know, we, we all, we've all come together as a family. Plus, we're we're also pretty tight knit, family wise. My husband and I, uh, Jeff. So it's it's almost like, you know, we're all both very family oriented. Mm. So we were able to like kind of blend both of our families together. You know, like he goes Quite to my seamlessly. family, and it's like you know he's like you know, mom, dad, and you know I go to his family, and it's like mom, dad. So we we have been very lucky that, you know. Y'all have blended yes. together well. Yeah. We All have. right, well, China, I know you've got a lot to unravel. I really have to put the pieces together. So coming up next, we're gonna hear from China and how her seven kids have blended. <laughs> Will you stay right there? We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Nightcap. We're talking about blended families with a few moms. We've got China, we've got Teresa, and we've got Elsa, okay. China, you had the most complex blended family. And through the course of this, we learned there are actually nine kids involved, but we luckily had you um, demonstrate on a board for us what we're looking at. Okay, so. Okay, so what you see here is, you're gonna see that me and Jazz, which is my ex-girlfriend, mm -hmm. we both came into the relationship which she came in with two kids, I came in with three kids. We then blended our family and had two more kids while we were together. So that's the seven. That's that's the solid seven, okay? And then <laughs> my current boyfriend has two children whom and which live with us. Got you, so, full time. And you co-parent with Jazz. And me and Jazz co-parent. So sometimes you have all seven, including the two. No? Not all seven, because I told you we got two 17-year-olds. So, oh, yeah. yeah. So now they, they do what they want. <laughs> and the 15-year-olds, too, they, when they want to be bothered, yeah, like, while I was on my way here, the 15-year-old texted me from school, I think you should come get me and take me to go get beats. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Teen. Teenage. Teen. So the teens, yeah. so the kids that we have basically is the two boys and the youngest girl, which is 11, and then the 11 and 14 year old boy of my current partner. Okay, so how are y'all as parents to your non-biological kids? Are you bonus moms? Are you um, kind of helping, kind of like a just a guardian figure? What role do you play? What do they call you? Okay, my kids, the seven, except for Samaj, because she called me her stepmama. But the other six kids are mama, that's it. Mm. With my current partner's kids, I'm just trying to, okay? Yeah. We, we. You're not overstepping, you're not like telling them what to do, there's no discipline involved? No, that's, that's for their dad to do. That's okay. for their dad to discipline them, not me. Okay. And vice versa, he don't, he don't discipline Miracle either. Let me say that, that's my 11 year old. He don't discipline her either. He'd be like, hey man, 
your daughter in there. I, I, okay, let me go check on that. Let me see what she got yeah. going on. Yeah. But yeah, we don't, we stay away from the discipline in each other's kids. That's just a respect thing for the parents that's on the outside of the relationship. Got you, which can be fishy. Teresa, what's it like for you? Well, my my daughter, again, was one when we split. My ex-husband remarried quickly, so he she's been around for a very long time. My daughter in public will call her, that's my stepmom, that's my stepdad, but she calls them by, she calls her by her first name, she always has. Mm -hmm. She doesn't call her mom, she calls her by her name, and she calls my new husband, her stepdad, by his name too. I, I don't know, she's always done that, I never force that, she just always, mm -hmm. Calls that's them by like, name. She doesn't say mom or dad in the house. And she was with them for a long time. You know, um, my ex-husband's new wife getting in the picture. She was around when she was like two or three. So she just doesn't, never did. We never forced her. We let her do whatever she wanted to do. So I don't know. It's just some natural thing. She always just told me that she just didn't want to, but for no reason. So, yeah, I'm not, I mean, yeah, I'm the only mom that she calls mom, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. That's how, what about you? So for us, again, They're our older. kids were older. Um, they call me by my name, mm -hmm. uh, or he calls me, I should say. Jeff's son calls me by my name. My kids call Jeff by his name. But at the same time, when I'm referring, for example, you know, to speaking to someone about his son, I'll say my son. Mm. Same thing with Jeff. If Jeff is talking to someone about my kids, he'll say my daughter, my son, you know, like that, but the kids themselves, no, they don't call us, but they don't also say my stepdad or my stepmom, or they'll just say Elsa or, um, but we feel like, you know, they're our kids yeah. all together. Mm -hmm. So like if I'm referring to his son, I don't, you know, I'll, I don't say stepson. Yeah. I'll say my son. Same thing with him. If he's referring to my kids, you know, he'll say my daughter or my son. And my kids also, like if they're talking to someone, they'll say, oh, my dad, you know, they yeah. refer to Jeff like that. Um, and I think it just came naturally for them. Like I said, it, he's, you know, he's a very dad, dad. Yeah. <laughs> so I think it came very naturally for them to just say, oh, my dad did this, or my dad said that, or, you know, especially my daughter. She's, um, I think she's a little bit more attached to him, I would say, um, and kind of refers to other people as, you know, oh, my dad, you know, which is kind of cool. Yeah, I have, yeah. I have an, an older, I have a 17 year old, oh my God. Uh, he's gonna graduate next year, so I'm in the fields. But he's he's not my biological child. He's my bonus son, but mm -hmm. I call him my son. I never say stepson. I don't say bonus son typically. Yeah. But people are always like, oh my God, you had a kid? <laughs> I'm like, and then I have to like explain. Sometimes I don't go through. I'm like, yeah, I had a kid 17 years right. ago. And right. no, I didn't. But he knows, to me, he is my son, mm -hmm. and I will not call him anything different. Yeah. And he doesn't call me mom. He calls me computer girl, which is a different story <laughs> for a different time. <laughs> All right. Well, we actually have a lawyer coming in for people who are probably going to uh, become a blended family in the future. And she's going to explain uh, some things you probably need to take care of or understand before you make this big commitment to unify some families. So you stay right there. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Nightcap. We've been talking about the joys and challenges of bringing two families together into one. We've got China and Teresa. And in the middle, we've got Brandy Lowry here. You may have known her as the old fashioned barrister, but she's back talking law. Okay, so listening to all of the examples here that we've heard today. I would actually call this a perfect world. Oh. In my world. Okay. In my family law world. I would because people are getting along. Because usually the phone calls that I get, they're not getting along with blended families. Mm. So either it is a spouse is upset because they feel like the other parents with um, his new wife or, you know, or even um, say like new husband or whatever, they're like, oh, he's spending too much time with them or she's spending too much time with them and neglecting our family. So then they want to start modifying orders if there's a custody order in place. Mm. Or they want to be like, oh, I want to terminate rights. So for them to get along happy-go-lucky that they have a perfect world to me y'all happy-go-lucky y'all y'all don't need uh miss lowry over here no listen <laughs> when it when it comes to the to my children the the ones that i gave birth to and my two boys that i had with my ex-girlfriend and my my other son i don't have to if i say give me my kids She's going to give me my kids. I, we, we've never been to court. We don't have court orders in place. 
co-parenting. My daughter, obviously she have a father, right? I don't have problems out of him. He, he do what he need to do when he need to do it, and I don't have to question him about that, right? That's right. So, I, so we yeah, don't. Perfect, perfect example. World. But for those that don't, I would, then you do have issues, I do recommend a court order. Not for you, because y'all are good. But that not so perfect world, court order. Like, you know, standard visitations, um, even uh, possession and access, child support, like things like that. If you can't get along, get a court order in place. Teresa, did you guys get along? Or? So we, be, again, my daughter was one when we split. So the whole court order was in place. Very clean divorce. Like mm -hmm. we had one lawyer, it was mine. He was like, fine, we signed it, done. We went against all the court orders at the beginning because my daughter was so young. It was hard to have her split and not be upset because she was away from me. So we went against it and we were supposed to do Wednesday every other weekend. And I gave him a little more time Tuesday, Thursdays, every other weekend for her to mm -hmm. help her get adjusted to it because she was so young. Well, we stuck with that for pretty much ever. And there were times where we were, I was going to be like, let's just go back to the way it is. And we never did. We don't go by the, the court order for holiday. Standard, yeah. We don't do any of that. That's probably a mistake. That's actually fine if you're getting along. Okay. So I always also say your court order is also your default. Like, let this be your default. If you tend to have issues, then you can default to the original order. So, like, y'all didn't rotate holidays. It's just like, hey, you go see your dad or she's with you, whatever holidays. Um, and that's fine. The extended, which I kind of had the expanded SPO, yeah. that's okay, too. But here's what happened at times. If you're been doing that for years and then somebody gets upset and now they want to follow the order. We've done that. I've threatened where I'm like, we'll go back to the way it's supposed to be on the orders. And he's like, fine, God. You know, we never did, but I was very close because. So now what he could do is his argument would be, and he would tell the judge, hey, we haven't been following the order. We've been doing this agreement and the judge may agree with him because Oof. you've been allowing that for X amount of time. There's not a time frame. But if the judge has been saying, oh, well, you've been doing, you know, additional two times, you have been following the um, order, you've been giving them holidays, and then now you're upset and mad and you want to go back, the judge could deny the request and be like, no, follow what you've been doing. So what I've always been told, and I hear this all the time, is we're in Texas, and if you're the mom in Texas, you'll get basically anything that you need or want. That's I've not true. I've that as well. Yeah. yeah. That is false. That's good to know, because <laughs> I've been hearing that the whole false. time. That is false. The standard is it's in the best interest of the child. Mm. That's it. It's the best interest of the child. I've heard the same rumor too, but it's literally it's in the best interest of the child. And there's standards that you have to follow for the best interest of a child. Okay, so advice as the moms and as the lawyer for somebody who's blending I mean, their families currently. I've said it on and off camera. It's all about the kids. We got a great mom over here, and she's said it a million times. It's all about her. When you you got to take the the self, I've been very selfish many times, and I know that, but you got to make it about the kids. No matter, as, as painful and hurtful as it is, you've got to make it about the kids. Adults have to learn how to take their feelings and hold on to that and focus on what's in the best interest of their child. You can't, and then you can't blend a family, right? Because mm -hmm. I, I see this a lot, blended families, and then when the, when the relationship don't work, what happens? You go away and the kids who been, who life mm -hmm. you been in all this time, maybe the mom like, oh no, you can't see my kids no more. Which you can't say nothing about that because those are her kids. But at the end of the day, do you understand what you're mentally doing to them kids? Because they're attached to this person and you just take them away. Like, it's not fair. I flat out asked my son, I was like, hey, if something happens between me and your dad, am I still gonna be computer girl, we still gonna hang? He's like, absolutely. I was like, that's right. <laughs> all right, well, thank y'all so much for coming on and talking about your blended families. It sounds like y'all are all living very happy lives in your blendedness, mm -hmm. right? I applaud that. Okay, yes. That make my job easier. <laughs> all right, coming up next, I'm heading over to the bar because we've got Elsa there and she's got uh, blended drinks and margaritas that I've got to try. So you stay right there, we'll be right back. We've got every episode of the Nightcap and we can go for hours. Download the Fox Local app on any of the following smart TV platforms and get in on the fun. Welcome back to the Nightcap. I'm behind the bar now because Elsa Matthews is actually, you know, one of the owners of Comfort Foodies. She's been here before, but you guys have delicious drinks. So you're here to do what, baby? Back that glass up! Oh, 
Okay, listen, I had the strawberry guava margarita, yes. fantastic. But the other ladies had a nice blended drink. So yeah, this is our tropical knockout uh, daiquiri. Tropical knockout? Yes. And like I said, two ounces of daiquiri, blend it up. All right, let's do it. Oh, oh there we go, there we go. Now we blend it, now we getting it to work. It was a bit of a challenge. It was. As, as blended families tend to be. All right, but Comfort Foodies is actually a blend of cultures, right? It is a blend of cultures. It's a Dominican soul food restaurant where you got empanadas, you've got soul, uh, oxtails, some other pork chops, brown stew chicken, Dominican style. And then? And then we've got daiquiris. Daiquiris, ooh, which is a perfect blend. Oh yeah, baby. Oh, hold up. Oh, hold on, I need a, a little bit more. Okay, not y'all being thirsty. Okay, yeah. she, uh, <laughs> China done ran <laughs> out, <real> okay. <laughs> Here we go. All right, we got a little bit more blended to you. Listen, if you're in a blended family, keep on with it. The children are first, they're the priority, so okay. make sure that works. And be good mamas, like the mamas up in here. All right, cheers to you. We'll see you guys next time. <laughs>